Thank you. Please be seated. We'll go back on the record in the matter of State of Utah versus McNeil. Mr. McNeil is present with his counsel. The state's attorneys are present. The jury is seated. <laughs> Inmate one is on the stand. You may continue. So before we go on um, with the phone calls, uh, yeah. Yeah, push on it. You may. I'm showing you a, an article online. The, the date on this one is September, 9, September 19th of 2012. Mm -hmm. and, and that would have been before your interview with Investigator Robinson. Yes. And uh, just to yourself, would you read the, the part that I've highlighted here in red? Can you read that? Mm -hmm. Uh, talking about um, um, the burden of divorce, right? Mm -hmm. Same same language that you <coughs> used in your interview with Investigator Robinson. I never used the word burden. Okay. And here's an article, February 25th of 2011. Read that to yourself. Mm -hmm. So, and, and this article is from ABC News, right? Mm -hmm. And in this article from ABC News, they're they're discussing. A perceived fairy tale mm -hmm. of the McNeil family, right? Yes. Same language that, that you used in your interview with Investigator Robinson. Yes. But you never saw these articles? No. And nobody from your family saw them and, and talked to you? I don't know them? if they saw them or not. I don't know. They never called and talked to you about them on the phone? I don't know if, I, like I said, I don't know if they saw that article or not. Okay. And so back to, to your telephone calls, you saw that transcript there in front of you? Yes. And uh, if you go to the, the one August 9th of 2013. Yes. See that? You, you spoke with your mother a fair amount while you are in prison, right? Yes. And in this phone call, you're, you're talking about um, Utah, correct? Yes. You don't have any ties to Utah other than this no. case, right? No. And so uh, in this case, uh, or I'm sorry, in this phone call on August 9th, 2013, you say, dude asked me about Jeff yesterday, too. Asked me about Utah. You mm -hmm. see that, right? Yes. And then your mother says, uh-huh. And then you said, and he was like, man, he said. And then your mother says, might not supposed to be talking about that, right? Yes. And then you said, no, 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 no. The, the, the person I'm supposed to talk to about it. Yes. And who is that person? That's the uh, SIS lieutenant. Okay. And, and, and that, that's at uh, prison? Yes. And, and then your mother says, oh, okay, right? Yes. And you said, he was like, man, he said, man, are you going to do it? And that's the SIS lieutenant? Yes. About? And I said, well, I don't know, man. He said, don't make me jump across the desk and slap you. He said, right? Yes. You're an idiot if you don't. He said, man, you could be home. This SIS lieutenant was he's yes. a law enforcement officer, right? Yes. So he was telling you that you're an idiot if you don't do it because you could be home. Well, he's a correctional officer. Right. Yes. And that's, that's what he said, right? Yes. And then your mother said, the state going to cut you a deal like that, you know? And you said, yeah, 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 you know. I'm going to make sure I get Raven to talk to him, and I'm going to get in touch my lawyer and stuff and talk to her. 
That's what you said, right? Yes. Your mother said, yeah. And then you said, and find out the real deal. If so, then I'm going. And, but if no, I ain't going to, you know? Yes. That's what you said, right? Yes. So in this conversation, you said, if they're not going to give you a deal, you're not going. At that time, yes, that was in August. That's what you said, right? Yes. And then down uh, on another phone conversation with your mother on uh, August 9th, 2013, uh, uh, you said, uh, let's just keep praying I get home around Christmas. Just keep that in your prayers. That's what you said, right? Yes. And, and to get home around Christmas, uh, you were expecting that uh, Utah was going to cut you a deal so that you could get out early. Right? No. No? No. If you want to refer back to the interview paper right here on page, um, page 9, okay. where I said, like I said, I have a motion in the courts now. The Sixth Circuit just started giving people the 18 to 1 ratio. If I receive it, I could get out tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'm still referring to the 18 to 1 ratio. Okay. Uh, my motion is still in court. It's been delayed, but it's still active. Okay. So even though you had this conversation with the SIS officer on the same day in this later phone call, you're referring to yes. uh, your, your other motion yes. to get out early. Okay. So then on August 10th, there's another phone call between you and your mother, right? Mm-hmm. And, and again, uh, you tell her that uh, you're hoping to get out uh, around Christmas. Yes. Right? And your mother says, of what year? Mm hmm And you say, this year. Mm hmm And your mother says, yeah, sure. Mm hmm And then what do you say? You want to read that next line? I mean, with Utah, you know what I mean. You're not referring to this other thing. No, not at that point I wasn't. So the very next day, you're not referring to, to that other thing? No. So on August 10th, you're referring to Utah uh, thing as, as being the In thing. In August, I didn't know when I was coming to court to Utah. You didn't know at all? I didn't know when I was coming to court in Utah at all. Okay, but you thought that you were going to get out before Christmas? Because of Utah? No, because of the 18 to 1. I'm still referring to that. Well, so, so help me understand why this is ambiguous then. It looks to me like you say, hopefully it will be around before Christmas of what year? Of, of Christmas, your mother says of what year? And you say this year. Mm -hmm. that, that's all right. Yes. And then your mother says, yeah, sure. And then you say, I mean with, with Utah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you were referring to the Utah thing as being what was going to get you out? I mean, that at that point... Yes, that was an option, too, but I didn't know when I was going to court. When I say around Christmas, I'm referring to the 18 to 1 because that's my, what my lawyer told me. Okay. So, so next you say, as soon as that go down in relation to Utah, yes. right? Yes. And, and so then your mother says that she's not getting my hopes up, though, because I don't want to be disappointed. And you say, yeah, me too, right? Yes. And then, then your mother says, I'm just, I'm just thinking that way. And then you say, I'm putting that date, I'm putting by Christmas in my head because the thing is going from October to November. Mm -hmm. The thing was the trial, mm -hmm. right? So you did know. Sometime August. between it, but I don't know when I'm actually coming to court. You just told us that you didn't know when the trial was going to be in August, I, I, right? No, I don't. It's not an actual date. Oh, okay. And so it's sometime between then. Okay. So, so right, right here, just seconds after the, the mm -hmm. part we read a, a minute ago, uh, you're saying that the thing is going down from October to November. Yes. Right? Okay. But I don't know when, sometime between October and November. Okay. Why don't we look down um, to the next line? Mm -hmm. Then your mother says, "But don't do that, because if you do that and it don't happen, you're going to be you're going to be really miserable Christmas. So just don't even do that." Mm -hmm. And then you say. Why don't you just read what you say there next? He said that the thing is going to be going from October 9th to November the 9th. So then I'm going to have from November the 9th up until Christmas to get out, and that should all happen. So, so, so me and Raven got to these, this, I don't know what that's supposed to be. And then it says I'm going to call my lawyer and stuff. 
So, so you did know. Uh, I mean, at, at that time, like I said, I have the motion in. I'm banking on the motion. I don't know what's going to happen with this right here. I didn't ask for anything. Okay. And I still haven't asked for anything. Okay. So, but you did know, actually, you, you knew when the trial was. I know was a, a, for, a right? timeline, but I don't know an actual time. I didn't know when I was coming here. Okay. So then, um, so then down on uh, line 66, you say, yeah, yeah, up well. She, referring to Raven, already know. And, and Raven has, has been one of your contact persons with uh, investigator Jeff Robinson, right? Mm -hmm. And, and so, so Raven already know. Uh, I told her when I was in Oklahoma that when I got there, we was going to crack down and see what Jeff's going to do. Mm -hmm. Jeff is Investigator Robinson, right? Yes. So in the same phone conversation, the, 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 where you've never asked for anything, you, you, you say that you're going to talk with Raven and have her crack down and see what Jeff's going to do, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And make sure he do the right thing, and mm -hmm. you know, right? Mm -hmm. And then. Uh, your mother says, mm-hmm, just like that, and you say, because if he ain't, then I ain't. Mm -hmm. That's what you say, right? That's what I said. So, so if they're not going to give you a deal, you ain't going to talk. Mm -hmm. That's what you said, right? That's what I said. So then you have another phone conversation with Raven that same day, right? Yes. Down there, uh, August 10th, that uh, we're now down to 423? Yes. And in that uh, conversation, you say, hey, we got to start working on Jeff and my lawyer next week, too. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, that Jeff that you got to start working on is uh, Investigator Robinson, right? Yes. And you got to work on him to, to get a deal so that you can get out by Christmas, right? Yes. Well, I mean, that's what I guess that's what you're implying. But well, that's what you're saying, right? If, if I had made a deal with Jeff over the phone, you would have that conversation here, too, wouldn't you? Oh, I... I don't know because I don't know where all, question. You, you, yeah. I'll even answer it for you. Uh, I don't know because you can talk uh, on the phone in, uh, in your counselor's offices that, that aren't recorded, right? The only conversation I have with Jeff in my counselor's office is in this transcript right here. Okay. So you, it, there is a conversation that I made from the regular phone to Jeff. You don't have that, that, trend, that transcript of that phone call? I, I've got just a paucity of evidence. I've got a very small amount of information that I'd like to have. Okay. So. That's the information that you would like to have. Yeah, I okay. would certainly like to have a whole lot more than just asking. Just August. Okay. So. So, um, so in this August 10th, 2013 call, uh, you say, hey, we've got to start working on Jeff and my lawyer next week, too, right? You agree yes. with that, right? Yes, I agree. So then flip over to, to page three there. And then you say, so we going on with plan A, which was plan B, that got switched back to plan A. Mm -hmm. That's what you said, right? Yes. And Raven says, yeah, I got you. And then you say, Operation, Operation Utah. So you call coming out here to, to testify against Mr. McNeil, Operation Utah. It was a joke. Okay. If you want to call it that, then yes. Well, that's what you said. You call it Operation Utah and say, we got to call my lawyer, right? Yes. And then on uh, August 14th of 2013, you, you, you did, in fact, place a call to your lawyer, right? Yes. Left a message for her? Yes. And then on August 14th, you had another conversation with uh, Raven, right? Yes. And uh, you told uh, Raven that you called your lawyer that day, right? Yes. And then over on page four, you say, hopefully it will be around Christmas time. I got to call her back tomorrow, though. Mm -hmm. Right? And that, that's still related to Operation Utah, right? Yes. Then Raven says, well, that's my Christmas present then, right? Mm -hmm. Then you say, yeah, because you know the trial, it's October the 9th. Or October or November, October to November. That's what you said, right? Yes. Then you say sometime around in there, that's what he didn't 
didn't he send it to you in an email? So you were referring to Jeff Robinson sending Raven uh, notification about the yes. time of the trial, right? Yes. And then you go, on to, you go on to say, well, I can't remember exactly when it is, but he told me, but I figure I think it's October the 5th or the 9th through November the 5th or the 9th. He said it's a five-week period. So if they're through the 9th, if they're through on the 9th, it should only take them a month to get me up out of here, and then I'm going, going to get home. Mm -hmm. That's what you said, right? So you were planning on Operation Utah to get you home on August the 14th, right? I guess you could say that. Okay. And then uh, down just a little bit further, uh, you can say, well, I got to talk to my lawyer tomorrow and really hear what she's going to say, and I'll call you tomorrow and, and let you know, but uh, don't tell Mama now, because we're still going on along with Operation Surprise. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. So, so now it's Operation Utah and Operation Surprise no. for you being home? No, not Operation Surprise. That's, that's something else. Awesome. That's between me and, my, me and my niece. Okay. And so it's just Operation Utah in relation to testifying against... Yes. Mail so that you can get home by Christmas. Right. So then on August 15th, you have another phone conversation with your mother, right? Mm-hmm. And, and you tell your mother to, you say, talk to me, right? Mm-hmm. Your mother says, I can't. And you say, yeah, you can, right? You see yes. that? Yes. Then your mother says, uh-uh. Right? Mm-hmm. Then you again say, talk to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah? And then, then your mother says, you know what it was? And then you say, what they, what they say? Yeah? Then your mother says, you don't want me to say all that. Don't want me to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Then you say, yeah, you can. This, this is go ahead. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. Then your mother says, but you know, you know, they mentioned that it was coming up soon and they have started reviewing uh, what went on and why they, why they even decided to do anything since it was supposedly been a no questions asked, you know, normal yes. thing. So your mother's talking about uh, Operation Utah, right? Something pertaining to the trial, yes. And then uh, just a, a little later on in that um, uh, phone conversation, um, then you say, um, uh, uh -huh, okay, I just want to know what they was talking about, you know, because I got need to know, uh, you know, what I mean. I mean not that I need to know details. I just want to know what they, they saying. You were referring to to the discussions on the news, right? Yes, it was you, something. It was something. She said something about uh, the coverage was going to be on TV and stuff. And, and you were saying that, the, that you need to know because you need to know the details is what you told her, right? I need to know what was going on because I didn't want to be on TV. Mm -hmm. And you, you indicated to your mother you need to know the details about the, the case, right? No. Okay. No. I said... I, I, I got need to know, you know, what I mean. I mean, not that I need to know details. I just want to know what they're saying. Okay. And that was in regards to being on, on television. I don't know why this message is chopped up like that, but I was asking about the TV coverage because it was said something about it was going to be covered on TV. Okay. Well, let's, let's read what your mother says next. So they always have their discussion and have their little panel of guests, and most of them be saying that, you know, what he did and why he did it and all that. And this one up there talking about it really could have been an accident. He's innocent until proven guilty and all that stuff. And you say, uh-huh, uh-huh, I got a holla at Jeff. That's what you said, right? Mm-hmm. And you know this thing been highly publicized and stuff, huh? Mm-hmm. Right? And your mother says, yeah, but if you... Uh, if you're watching it, don't let nobody know you're watching it or why. Mm -hmm. right? And you said, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Then your mother says, but if you get a chance, you need to. Mm -hmm. I thought that was the conversation that you had about. Yes, you it was the because cover, right? 
she was telling me I need to, to watch it to see if it's going to be covered on TV. Also, not to watch it in front of inmates so they could see that I went to court to testify. Mm -hmm. I don't know why that's not in here either if, if all the other conversation is in there. Well, if, if, if you said it about this, it's, it's just in here as far as what little we got. Objection. Move to strike. Counsel testifying. Sustained. And then your mother says, it was all surprised when it first started. I said, uh-huh, oh, oh my gosh, this, this is it. And I watched it really attentively. Then when it was over, I emailed you, right? Mm -hmm. And told Ken I emailed you, and he said no. And I said, no, I didn't say a word. I just emailed, mm -hmm. right? And then you said, yeah, you did it right. You did it right. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you said, uh, yeah, exactly. As soon as I read, I just got off the computer and just called. Yes. And your mother says, because I don't never tell you nothing like that, and I knew you'd know exactly what I, why I said it. Mm -hmm. And you said, yeah, yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. And your mother says, and I gave you the time, the channel, and you know exactly what was before, so you, you would know uh, what kind of what was going on. Right? Yes. So your mother told you when programs were coming on to watch about Mr. McNeil, right? Mm -hmm. And then, like you were just saying, you said, I hope that thing is not on TV, man, you know, mm -hmm. right? And then, uh, then you say again on the next page, yeah, I got to get in touch with old Jeff. I got some questions for him, right? Yes. And then uh, you say uh, that uh, he's got to talk to you because uh, he doesn't want me to get all the way up there and say, uh-uh, no, nah, no, I'm not even going. Take me back. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's what you said, right? Yes. Then you said, I got to know because if there's going to be cameras in there and all that bullshit in there, then that's a wrap. Yes. Right? Then on August 16th, um, uh, you had a uh, conversation uh, so the next next day, you had a conversation with an investigator, right? Yes. And uh, and and you said, and I was wanting to know, you know, uh, would I get any type of credit of of doing that? Mm -hmm. Investigator said, Oh, you certainly should, yeah. Right. What page? What? Uh, are page you on six the next still. Page? August sixteenth, eleven fifty-seven a.m. conversation. I'm 262. Okay, I, see, I see it now. Right? Yes. So, so the investigator said that you certainly should get credit for, for testifying, right? Mm hmm Objection. Foundation as far as the name of the investigator. Uh, s sustained. Can you lay the foundation if he knows? Uh, do you know the name of the investigator? Yes, I do. Steve? Yes. And then... Then he asked, how much longer do you have on your sentence? And you said, like, two and a half years, right? Yes. And then he asked you uh, the name of the, of the prosecutor or anything like that, and then turn it over to the next page. You said, yeah, his name is Jeff, mm -hmm. right? And then you go on and, and you uh, uh, tell him that, uh, uh, that it's related to the Martin McNeil trial, right? Yes. And then you again... On August 16th, I'm telling the date of the trial again, right? Yes. I said November the 5th or either the 9th through the 9th, something you like that. You said October the 5th through November the 5th or either the 9th through the 9th, right? It's, yes, that's what it says. Then, uh, then the investigator tells you, and so I mean that's that's going to help. But if you, what we'll do is wait and see if they need you, in, and you actually testify. Right. 
Yes. And then after you testify, we will get with the AUSA. You understand that to mean assistant U.S. attorney, right? Yes. And so after you testify, we will get with the AUSA here after we have talked with the prosecutor out there, right? Yes. And, and then the investigator goes on to, to talk with you, and he says, and we would tell the prosecutor, the AUSA, uh, you know, what assistance you provided the Utah people, and also we'll give the AUSA the name and contact number for the Utah prosecutor so we could confirm that if he needed to, right? Yes. And then he says, and then we would file a Rule 35, which is a reduction in your sentence, and basically you would not have to come back here for that. They could do that without you being present, right? Yes. And then over on page 8, uh, uh, the investigator says, I won't say that it would do away with those two and a half years, but it certainly, I think, would put a big dent in it. Right? Yes. And then he says, uh, who knows if it's something, if your testimony is really great and kind of puts the nail in the guy's coffin, then you know, you might get the two and a half off. Right? Yes. And then he asks, because uh, how many for into months have you served already? And then you say 77 or 78, right? Yes. And so the investigator says, so you've already been in for six years or greater, so you know it may knock that time off. Right? Yes. So at that point in time, you're thinking that by providing testimony in Operation Utah, you may get all the rest of your time knocked off, right? Possibly. And then, uh, and then you say that... Um, You say, he said he'd be willing to help me out in any way that he could. Mm -hmm. You're referring to Investigator Robinson there? Yes. And then, uh, and then you say that uh, he said that he was going to call you, right? Yes. And this is on um, August 16th? Yes. So you had talked to Investigator Robinson as of August 16th about talking to, to your, your investigator about you filing something in the federal courts to get time off of your sentence? Oh, um, no. No? No, I hadn't. Then, and so why, why did you tell Investigator Robinson to call the investigator then? I was planning on uh, asking him to call them. I didn't ask him for anything. I didn't ask him for any kind of deal, nothing like that. I asked him to talk with my lawyer. You just asked him to talk to your lawyer about the deal? Yes. I mean, I don't know why you don't have that conversation, though. You've got all the rest of this. You should have had that one. Okay. I don't know why I don't have it either. So. And then you go on to say, because he, Investigator Robinson, was going to call you, and I don't know if he was able to get in touch with Beth or not, but I will, um, I will email my niece and call her and get his information from her, because she has. Mm -hmm. And turn over to the next page on August 17th. And then this is the phone call that, that you have with your sister? Yes. And did you tell your sister that she was excited because I talked to the lawyer yesterday? Yes. Right? And he said, full speed ahead, let's do this. Well, referring to Operation Utah, right? Referring to me coming to testify, yes. Okay. And then you can say, I need just full name and number, right? Line 382? Uh, yes. Then you say, ain't you got a private number, right? Yes. And then you say, okay, I need that. She needs it. She has to get in touch with him like Monday. I have to do it, or I have to have it, right? Yes. So then turn over to page 10. Counsel, you approach.
uh, five after three. We'll recess for the day. Please keep in mind my prior admonition to you. You're not to discuss the case amongst yourselves or with anyone else. Don't form or express any opinion about how the case should be decided until it's finally submitted to you for deliberation. Do no research on your own using your computer or something else. And avoid television, radio, or internet news coverage of the trial. Um, can we begin tomorrow morning at 8.30? Yes, Judge. I don't anticipate housekeeping matters in the morning. Uh, we'll begin at 8.30. Courts in recess. All rise. Thank you. Please be seated. You may step down. Let's uh, back to Mr. Spencer, I think. Council, have jury instructions been filed with the court? Your Honor, we were... We had some people in our office working on them today. I don't believe they're here yet. We anticipated they'd be brought over, be brought over to us by now. Okay. What about from the defense? We, we've got some uh, here, Your Honor. Yeah, it, it has. Uh, what are the chances of you meeting together to see if you can agree on a set of instructions? Um, if, if you have some put together and you have some, why don't you exchange them and see if there are ones that you can agree upon and then we can focus our the time we have tomorrow on disputed instructions. Like Your Honor, we only have one instruction that is in the stock, so I would say the chances are pretty high we can um, come to an agreement. We might have potentially. We might have one or two. Is all there probably aren't stock. Okay. Three. I would also like you to think about the issue of any curative instructions you would want me to give. Um, I, I don't. I don't know that there are any, but we have to think about that. Uh, if you desire any curative instructions. Let me know, and and we can talk about that. Anything else today? I would just say, Your Honor, I think the likelihood of us being able to close tomorrow is is not good. Okay. Um, Could uh, I would say probably an hour. Well, you got some time with with Mr. with inmate number one. I would say maybe half an hour more, and then ha half an hour to redirect, likely. Probably so. Okay. Gypsy Willis, maybe an hour. Okay. Two, possibly, I'm not sure. We would then expect to close our case at that time. How long from the defense? I believe our case will be fairly quick. Um, I anticipate um, calling um, Beth Bester, our ergonomics expert, and then Jim Van Zant, Linda Strong, and APMP agent Tammy Black. Our cross-examination, at least on the expert, will probably exceed the direct examination. How long? So we, we could finish tomorrow then, but probably not instruct or argue. Would that be fair? I think that's probably a good assumption. Okay. Why don't we hear the end of uh, the state's case tomorrow? We'll hear the defense case tomorrow. Recess. We'll get instructions uh, put together in a form that uh, has preserved your objections, but we, we get those instructions together and we'll be ready to instruct on Friday morning and argue in case we'll go to the jury at n probably noon Friday. Is that fair schedule? I think that's fair. And 
we've all expressed our reservations with the long weekend and perhaps the jury would be willing if the court is as well to even deliberate on Saturday if it goes into the next day. That's uh, certainly possible and uh, we would need to make arrangements here at the courthouse to make that happen, but I think we can. Anything else today? That's all, Your Honor. Okay, thank you very much for your work. Court's in recess.